we take a close look at the cutting tool of a shaper, or on the lathe is also true because of this round nose here, this uh, part, round nose. The finish on our part, if we could watch under a microscope, it will look like this. And this distance between two waves is of course the feet of the feet mechanism. Every time the part moves of one click of the feet mechanism. Now on my shaper the minimum feet is 0 0.15 millimeters. I can also choose 0 0.15. 30 or 0.45. Now I think it's easy to understand that if we reduce the feed, the finish on the part will be way smoother because the wave will be cut more like this. And this is why I took my shaper part, this is of course the feed mechanism. And inside here we find what could be, I'm going to put this here, what could be a gear. Now it's not really a gear, but it's, it's sort of a gear. The system in here, there's a pin and takes every time one or two or three teeth and make it turn by every movement. I think that is not a complicated system. This gear, we're gonna call it a gear to make it easy, this gear has 26 teeth. One full turn of the feed system is 4 mm movement of the table. So if I want a feed of 1 tenth per tooth, I need to make a new gear with 40 teeth on it and not 26. One tooth will be one tenth of a millimeter. My idea is to mount these two ugly piece of angle right here. Of course I'm gonna clean them up. And then I prepared two bushings which I'm gonna mount right here. These two bushings are gonna hold this one in place like this, that's the idea. I also prepared a gear blank which fits here and then I can cut the teeth. And in the original gear here you can see there is a key slot so I have to cut a key slot in here and I have to cut a key slot in the shaft. To make key slots in gears like this one, this is the tool I use with a piece of high, high speed steel in here and then of course with this ring it's held it on here. Now there's just one little problem, too big. So my first project will be to turn this diameter a little bit down in the lathe. Done. Right, now let's install the thing. This one goes here, of course. What's happening? Uh -huh. Okay, let's nut it. Good. In the meanwhile, I also reassembled the feed mechanism part, but without this gear system, of course, because I will need it to take measurements. Right, let's put a vise on this table and put the part in.
Before I tied this uh, slotting bar, of course we have to align this uh, cutting tool, make sure it's perfectly or almost perfectly parallel with the table. So I put on my vise a little parallel here, which in theory should be parallel with the table. We bring it down and if I take a piece of paper now it's really easy to see if the tool is parallel or not that looks good just a little bit of a problem if I put the vice this way and I bring the tool post down this side here is gonna touch the movable jaw system of the vise so that's not gonna work if I turn the other way that's nice with this uh, swivel system if I put it this way at the end of the backstroke uh, I don't have enough clearance here this side so this old vice should move a bit more this way but it's not possible I'm about at the maximum so I'm gonna take it off again and use another vice to center this uh, cutting tool I'll use the easiest method that exists it's the scratching the bottom method now you can see there's two lines I hope you can see so because of the tool is uh, horizontal of course both lines are in the deepest part of this boring now I have to go down two millimeters this boring is 22 this distance and when I measure from the bottom of the slot to this side it's 24 I left here enough stick out just to be able to put my calipers here inside to make measurements if the part is too deep in the vise of course this side of the calipers is gonna touch and I cannot take measurements so like this will be fine I'm gonna do this very slowly, take my time, try not to break something, use plenty of cutting fluid. There is a problem. For I don't know what reason, you can see here a little bit, this uh, cutting tool is pushed up, so it's coming out. Okay, I'm gonna make some kind of flat on it and come back. This little slot is now 3.2 millimeter wide, but I need 5 millimeter, so I installed my indicator and we're gonna move 90 in one direction cut down to depth and after we're gonna put 90 in the other direction and cut again Back to zero, 90 the other direction. The 
this is the little key that goes in here it's uh, really a little key No, I have to make it a little bit wider. Now the gear is uh, finished and I have to cut of course also a keyway in this shaft where I put it in this uh, vise here. Put my center drill in and then with the primitive line it out system that looks good. Okay. Five millimeter. To center this uh, shaft in the vise, to be sure that the hole I drilled is uh, nice and square, it's an easy little trick, I put the used drill bit in it, in the hole, and then check with the square if indeed it is square. That's not complicated. I think now you can see clearly why I first drilled this uh, little hole here. So the chip has some place to go if you don't drill a hole before cutting. The chip has no place to go and you will have this uh, amount of chips that will not break and more and more and more and in one moment it's gonna turn to a disaster. This system just drill a little bit the hole a little bit deeper than the slot must be. It works perfectly fine. This is the little key that goes here. It's a little bit a loose fit but I think that will do. The gear blank. It works and this is more or less the setup I had in mind. I left here this uh, shoulder on the shaft so the cutting forces will push the shaft in the bushing. No movement anymore so that's gonna be good. Of course there's no need to maintain the shaft to move the other way because there's no cutting forces the other way. You can easily find this uh, templates on the internet just uh, google it and uh, you will find and then I printed it out on a piece of paper glued it on a sheet metal and then with a file I filed out the 40 teeth I need so this one I'm gonna mount of course the other side right here and then make sure 
it's well tied, better than this, but I will do after I have to take it apart again. Here somewhere I have to put a set screw so I can uh, limit or even block the movement of the shaft. And here in this teeth there will be a finger I have to make with uh, some kind of click spring system. So I move one tooth, click in, set the set screw, make the cut, re uh, release the set screw again. That's a bit the idea. So first let's drill and tap here to uh, put the set screw, but I think it will be easier if I put the set screw on this side and then maybe put the finger down here somewhere. I think that would be easier to work. This uh, first part of this video we just uh, watched has been recorded more than three months ago before I went to the hospital. And today is Christmas Day. I have no idea when this video will be finished, when it will come out. We'll see, not, not a problem. But today, Christmas Day, is for me the first day again in the workshop after more than three months. So it's a bit my personal Christmas gift to myself to start working it again in the workshop. Now the fun is, Everett's workshop, he watched with uh, lots of interest my uh, steam engine or compressed air engine video and he saw that I didn't have any dividers useful to the job. So what he did, he sent me this brand new uh, spring dividers. So this is going to be very useful. Let's open it a bit. I didn't open it yet. so I think this is going to be very useful here in the shop. It's still uh, sticky. Okay, I have to clean it up and maybe give it a bit of uh, attention. But Everett, thank you very much. At least you know what I need. This is going to be good. What he also did, and he asked me, he sent me these two high speed steel tool blanks. Now, this looks enormous. Normally, I use this 10 by 10 millimeters, 10 by 10 on 100 in the shaper, and also in the lathe, so I can switch. And he is asking me to experiment a bit with these. Now that comes really good because I had to buy new and I had and I was hesitating about the size I'm gonna take. Maybe again the same, maybe other size. Now these are 8 by 20. So twice the thickness as this one for the rigidity that will be a big benefit. For the project now I'm working on in this video, I'm gonna put this to the test because he asked me and I think it's really interesting to try it out. And this is the setup I had in mind. I made just a simple piece of sheet metal, a spring that clicks in here. That's a bit the idea. Now, of course, this is not my idea. I do just like everybody else. I watch YouTube videos from other people. So, in fact, I learned this little trick from you. Now, to cut this, there's uh, different options, of course, I can choose. And the first idea could be to put my cutting tool right here vertical and feed down and make every time the cut which is good because we can use the clapper 
that will be okay. Now the downside is of course that I have to dial in on the moving ram and try to be precise on the depth. It's not possible to put a depth stop here on the tool slide, so I have to do it only by the dials. <coughs> Now, to center the table, it's not too complicated. There's an old video I made uh, a year or two ago for, for that. You can check it out if you want. Now, there's no table lock for the left and right movement on this table. So, I have to be careful not to bump this hand wheel. But, what I, maybe I can do is put my table stops here. One here, one the other side, and lock the table between two, so there will be no risk of movement. Option number two could be to cut from the side, which has the advantage that I don't have to put my hand on the moving ram and trying to uh, see the dials that are moving. I can use this one and the easiest part and of course the cutting tool will be in here this way voilà. and then and I can use this one that doesn't move and use the dials and maybe install my table stop here to have always the same depth could be a good idea of course very important in that case we lock the clapper because if the clapper lifts we're gonna have a serious crash here in the gear. Now in this case the tool is gonna rub every time on the backstroke and I've seen while I was making the tool that this tool still is a little bit soft so it will wear out a little bit too quickly I think. I think I'm gonna give it a go with this setup, cutting down. I'm gonna go slowly, maybe 45 strokes a minute. I will give it a big mark with the sharpie on the dials, will make it a bit easier to see for me. This is gonna be the first cut of the first gear I ever made in my life. Never made gears before. So here goes nothing.
That was fun to do. And now, if we look at all these teeth closely, we see that some of them are a little bit smaller than the others. This one is smaller, this one is smaller, this one is bigger. And the only explanation I can think about is because of the flexibility of the finger I used, this uh, sheet metal is of course flexible, but it's uh, flexible in all directions. So I think next time I'm going to use a shorter one and more rigid. So the cutting tool, more than rigid enough for this uh, application, and I did not have to regrind the point. It's still nice and sharp. Of course, this one is uh, cold roll steel, so it's not too hard. It's a really so soft material. Okay, let's put this thing on the machine and see if it actually works, because we still don't know. seems to work well every time one tenth of a millimeter movement that's what I was looking for this is the result of a cut of a half a millimeter deep and a step over of a half millimeter it looks like the surface has been worked with dynamite a bit of course for this little machine it was way too much. I'm gonna move a bit, maybe we can see it better. This uh, line pattern. I'm gonna make another cut and this time we're gonna take also a half a millimeter deep and a step over of three tenths. There's a bit a problem here. I will show you. You see, sometimes the system stops. I think this uh, point system does not plunge deep enough into the teeth I made. So maybe there's a little bit more work to do on it. See it stopped again. And when I push it, it goes again. I'm gonna take it apart again and touch the teeth with a file. I make a little bit more of a V opening on it, that will be better. The last cut you just saw is this one. Uh, the cutting speed was about 22 meters a minute. A half a millimeter deep and a step over of one tenth and this was the cutting tool I used the roughing tool nothing special I suppose and I think the finish is more than decent I hope it shows a bit on camera I don't know now what's good in this uh, small step over system I just made uh, with this uh, new gear is that I don't have to change the tool if the surface finish is not really important I can have a decent finish even with the roughing tool so I don't need to switch to uh, another tool to a shear tool uh, for example 
Of course, I know that if one day I want to make real gears, and I would like to do that, I need more precision than this template and flexible uh, sheet metal finger system. But we will figure it out. I can only hope it was a little bit useful. Maybe it can give you some ideas to make something else on other machines. If you don't have a dividing head, this could maybe be a good system. Depends on the precision you need. With, of course, uh, absolutely special thanks to Everett Workshop. I will put a link in the description to providing this uh, high-speed steel, uh, the little tool I made. Of course, I'm gonna give it more experimenting and try to share my experience with you so we can all win a little bit out of it. And a fantastic new year to everyone.